Whatever they said about the last 10 kilometers, it's real. Hey guys, um, if you have watched the first part of this series, um, welcome back. Um, else, welcome to today's video. And I was in Taiwan for the Taiwan KOM Spring Challenge 2023. And today I'm gonna share my experience of participating in the event. Um, do a bit of analysis and share everything I've learned um, with all of you. So over the years, we have seen many popular cyclists um, who did the event. We have Sai and Matt from GCN. We have Phil Gaiman who came in 6th in a stacked year with Nibali who went on to set the record timing. And then um, you also have the super strong uh, YouTuber Jesper Verqui who smashed it in 2019 as well. So those are the super strong guys and I'm coming in today um, to share my experience from a perspective of a pretty average cyclist. So you can check out my profile and cycling statistics in the description below. And if you Zwift, uh, you will know that I am a category B rider. So the first part of today's video is going to be about the race day. Um, so actual footage of the route, rest stops and people I meet etc. Um, then I'm going to dive a little deeper into the analysis part um, in the second half. And so feel free to hop around. So I chose to stay near the train station because I don't want to be moving with my luggage too much. Um, cycling to the starting point is actually easier than moving around with um, everything I have on me. So usually the starting point is at the Qixing Tan beach area. Thereafter, it's a 15 kilometers ride to the start of the climb. Um, however, the starting point for this event that I was in was somewhere just before the climb. Therefore, it's actually important to note that the starting point might differ from, from um, event to event, uh, depending on the situation. I did a recon ride um, just a day before the event. Um, it was raining that Sunday morning and it was forecasted to be very similar the following day, uh, which is the event day. Um, I really wanted to do the recon ride because I wanted to get a good sense of the distance and the environment that I will be riding on on the day itself. So also if you want to chill a little and experience the, the place, the Taroko Gorge for example, uh, you might want to do it as well uh, because I don't think you will have the time to do that on the event day. Um, I took a couple of photos just because it was really nice, really beautiful. Um, I remember it to be quite cold and the roads weren't exactly in the best riding condition just because it's wet. Um, later in the hotel where the briefing was taking place, I kind of overheard a few local riders. Um, they were talking about the rain and how it would make the event more difficult. So I was really praying for a good day tomorrow. The registration and briefing um, happened later in the afternoon. So it was held at a Li Xuan International Hotel. So you could cycle there if you want. I've seen people do it. I took a cab there instead because I didn't like the idea of um, leaving my bike outside the hotel. Former pro cyclist Simon Garrens was here as well. Um, I think the organizers were saying that he's been meaning to experience the Taiwan KOM for quite some time but hasn't got the chance to do it. So the sequence is registration then briefing. So during the registration, you will get the KOM bag, your number tags, uh, your electronic tag, and a few freebies. So the organizers will then walk the participants through the event during the briefing. Um, you can actually visit the Taiwan KOM website to get the exact same information. Um, all the links again are in the description below. However, I only found out about the location change uh, of the starting point through the briefing. So I would advise that um, it's best that you attend the briefing. Um, however, one of the things that I didn't feel go quite well was that the briefing was almost entirely in Mandarin. So um, poor Simon had to sit through the entire thing. I believe he's got help, but the guys at the back, not so much. Um, so I had to clean the bike later that day as well. 
you know, I was in a mess after that ride in the rain uh, and I hate riding with a dirty bike so dirty bike is an inefficient bike and um, take care of your machine or take care of you that kind of thing so I brought some gels some sneaker bars some Pokari sweat in powder form um, just in case the rest stops don't provide me with um, isotonic drinks So nothing out of the ordinary for most cyclists, I think um, we all wake up early to cycle and this was pretty much the same. So that morning was perfect, no rain, floors all dried up, you know, it was really pleasant to ride in. I met with a local cyclist, um, Johnny, on my way there and we kind of chatted a bit. So he told me he was here to experience the event as well and in fact, the spring and the summer KOM was created for this exact reason. So this is to allow more riders to experience the Taiwan KOM route because the cutoff time is actually um, three hours more than the autumn KOM. So my game plan was pretty simple. Um, since the beginning, my goal was to experience the event. I've been thinking about experiencing the Taiwan KOM for a while now, and I know I'm strong enough to complete the event. It's not a race, I was just going to treat it as an endurance ride. So I'm just going to stay in my high zone 2 and low zone 3. Uh, that should be conservative enough for me to still have some gas in the tank for the last 10k that everyone's talking about. So the start was actually pretty frantic um, <laughs> because the climb starts after a right turn and everyone went nuts for some reason. To be honest, uh, I kind of got a little excited for a bit as well. Um, but I quickly held back because I know that this wasn't part of the plan. Um, it's going to be a 4 to 5 hours event for me and I'm not good to be anywhere uh, near the front pack on a climb. So absolutely no point at all. Um, however, there are still some draft benefits, especially at the start where it can be quite flat on certain sections. Um, so I did my best to stay in the draft and put out as little power as possible. So I remember feeling strong I was kind of enjoying the first 2000 meters plus of climbing I was alternating between zone 2 and zone 3 uh, I was getting out of the saddle every once in a while to prevent myself from stiffening up so the temperature at that point of time was cooling and I felt like I could keep this up for a very long time uh, the views especially in the valley were mesmerizing it just feels so small and so in awe of the mountains um, at this point of time, I was riding with another participant, Wei Chong. So for the first thousand meters or so of climbing, and we're just chit-chatting for a bit before we bid farewell at Sipao, which is the first um, rest stop. I was actually planning to stop at the second one at um, Sing Payang to refuel. And along the way, he gave me a lot of um, pointers. And it's just really nice to have someone guide you when you're in foreign land. And FYI, they were giving out bananas at the rest stops. So I took one, I took a couple, and just disposed of them in the mountains. Um, that's okay because it's biodegradable. So I must have like three or four bananas on my way up. I also had my gels and sneaker bars, and it's actually super important to replenish cups um, throughout the entire climb. Um, so I believe that my fueling refueling is actually quite on point as well and while we are on the topic of um, disposing trash um, these wrappers are not biodegradable so I tuck them in my beep shots and dispose of them later on after the event uh, and I'm saying this because I um, hope that we can all be a bit more mindful of these things so um, I stopped for a while at Sing Payang uh, lost about six minutes plus there because I had to change my battery on the GoPro uh, the Battery life is actually decent, but it's just I always forgot to turn it off. So that sucks So I was feeling strong at this point of time never would I have thought that this was the beginning of the end for me 1995 it says so another hour plus so of climbing um, from that point on 
breathing had become quite labored. You can feel the altitude. Um, and at around the 2,150 meters elevation mark, uh, the groin on my right leg started to cramp. Uh, I didn't stop, I just got out of the saddle and tried to straighten the leg with every downstroke. Um, at, at this point, um, there's still another 1,000 meters of climbing to do, and that's when I know that it's gonna be a long ride. Had a bit of like a cramp drama early on. I didn't stop, so I just alternate getting out of the saddle, standing up, just stretching a bit as I go, and that helped quite a lot. Uh, it's kind of demoralizing. Um, should this happen? With a few hundred meters left, uh, I'll be like, yeah, the end is near. And the environment at this altitude wasn't helping as well. The clouds set in and it's just silent here again. The tunnel was narrow and dark. Uh, on some stretches of the road, you just get this feeling that not even trees want to be here. And to make things worse, I was at that infamous final 10 kilometers. So the Taiwanese nicknamed it the Devil Section. Uh, this is where you will see a lot of riders starting to push their bikes. Uh, I've seen that on some YouTube channels. I haven't seen it on the ride itself. Um, conversely, it's also called the road to sky because of how beautiful it is on a clear day. So I guess it really depends. And to be honest, I was kind of cocky coming into this event. I've never had to zigzag in my life. Uh, I know that I'm strong enough to take on short bouts of 10 plus percent gradient. So in fact, I've done it last December, you know, going to the same peak from the west. There's just these long stretches of um, 10 plus percent elevation kind of gradient kind of climb. I've smashed it on Zwift as well. So 100% trainer difficulty, no problem at all. Um, however, after a while, <laughs> My left groin started to cramp as well. Um, with both my groins gone, found myself zigzagging for the first time in my life. Uh, I was just doing a humble 2.2 to 2.7 watts per kg on the steeper sections. Uh, it would, and looking at it right now, um, it wasn't even that steep. However, um, if I put out more power than that, uh, my groins would start to act up. Um, I think it's just a case of getting humbled by the mountains. <laughs> So I continued slugging my way up and it was such a relief to see the 3000 meters mark. Um, after a very welcome and short descent, I was at the final one kilometers mark. Um, it was really foggy, cold, and I remember feeling it like, feeling like eternity. Uh, it wasn't before long I arrived at the finish line, which was kind of anticlimactic. I wasn't smashing it in, I wasn't really pushing. I just, just slugged my way up towards the end. So um, it was really rough. Uh, it wasn't like a Zwift race or intervals kind of tiring. It's just, I remember just feeling so big. I'm finally done. That was super rough. Whatever they say about the last 10 kilometers, it's real. So, so cold up there and uh, 5 degrees Celsius. I got my bag and quickly made my way to the vehicle. I've brought food and I didn't bother about the food truck that's outside. So I'm in the vehicle right now and it's just super cold outside. I'm not gonna go out. Mm, but there's like a food truck. Not gonna go out. So during this point I received like uh, I received a message from Wei Chong. So we exchanged our contact details at the finish line. Uh, he told me to head over to the podium because apparently I want something. What? I got a prize. You know, 
。好、啊，有这种事。你有没有？你有没有？你有没有？这直接录了吗？哎、欸，陈叶文，陈叶文成绩也是非常好哈。上次在我们登山王也是有很好的成绩哈。来看这里啊。所以今天出发的时候呢，他的排位也是非常的好。好了，你们可以在。冰峰山是我们那个谁？哎、欸，冰峰山那个，我们领队叫什么？女生。那个叫做我有。女生。叔父校长叫什么？好，第三名是丽恩。露露。啊，对，露露。好，丽娜。好，第四名是陈。Yeah, and she called me Lulu. What the? Fuck? I'm so I guess I'm Lulu now. 可以，都可以，都可以，来拍照了。有管制的。那个第一。恭喜恭喜！呜呜！好，哎，你们举高一点来，要不我挡到脸呐，挡到脸。后面的 banner 啊，啊，要不要挡到？不会，不会。I I was happy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but at the same time, I kind of felt very embarrassed as well. I came in third, uh, in the 30 to 35 age group, despite my not so admirable timing at five hours and eleven minutes. I would have traded the trophy and come in last for a perfect groin and my target time without hesitation. So um, that's that. My KOM experience, uh, a transport vehicle that I've paid for during registration took uh, some of us down back to Hualien. Uh, had a really good dinner after that. Um, guess what? I had like four cups of milk tea, uh, that night as well. Uh, the next day I took a flight back to Singapore. Marking the end of my Taiwan trip, so it was a real eye opener, and I want to come back. So I I will come back.、Uh, I still believe that I can do four minutes, thirty minutes, uh, four hours, thirty minutes, and I will get that. And here's how I plan to do it. So there are three official Taiwan KOM events every year. The one in the autumn is the most competitive and has a cut-off time at six hours thirty minutes. It also requires the participant to provide some sort of evidence that、um, they are experienced enough to take on the event. I don't know how or what the process is like.、Um, however, the spring and summer challenge acts as a qualifier for the autumn event, so you'll be qualified to participate in the autumn event. Should your timing in either one of these events fall within、um, seven hours? So I did a bit of digging and found Jesper's event log on Strava, and the numbers are actually quite astounding. So he completed the event in three hours and fifty-seven minutes, averaging two hundred and ninety watts on the entire climb. Which, to my best estimate,、uh, should translate to about、um, 3.5 to 3.6 watts per kg. I might be wrong, so that is actually quite an insane effort considering how many people, myself included,、uh, would have taken a four plus hour timing as a win. So now we have established、um, kind of the fast end of the spectrum, and I was doing a bit of research in Chinese as well, looking up content in Chinese. So、um, during this time, I came across a video from this channel called、uh, Formosa TV Entertainments, where the host、um, Windy tried to take on the challenge as well. So she took on a 20 minutes FTP test in the video, which I think translates to about two watts per kg.、Um, that's my estimate based on what I saw. She completed the event in nine hours and 14 minutes, and during this, she stopped at every rest stop, at, and at Some point in time, she kind of puked as well. So don't get me wrong.、Um, I'm not shaming. So I'm only trying to emphasize how tough this challenge is, and I think that's a point as well. So all of this helped form a basic understanding of what's required to complete the event. So on the left side of the spectrum, you have Windy with、uh, FTP of two watts per kg, completing the event in nine hours. So that probably means that her zone two should be about 1.2 watts per kg, and on the other side of the spectrum, you have a category A cyclist Jesper Verqui, averaging 290 watts, which should be his, should be his zone zone three,、um, and finishing the event in three hours and 57 minutes. And then somewhere in the middle, you have me,、uh, averaging 204 watts, 2.6 watts per kg for five hours and 11 minutes. So this should give you quite a good understanding of where you stand in the spectrum. 
Um, given that my advice is that don't count your chicken before they hatch because what you think you can do and the reality of, of what's up there could be very different uh, which brings me to my next point so be it on the trainer or on the road uh, I've been doing proper endurance rides for quite some time already uh, three to five hours staying in high zone two low zone three so none of that free wheeling drafting zone one stuff proper base work so um, if you are particular as well you probably know what i mean um, trainer difficulty is also set at 100 percent on zwift so my legs are kind of used to the same the gradient with the same gear ratio so i mean that's the whole point right mm, another contentious topic but let's move on so assuming that endurance and gradient weren't the issues, um, that leaves me with the cold and the altitude. So looking at my performance at the event, the first cramp happened at about 2,150 2, meters mark. Uh, so with slightly less than 3 hours into the event, uh, and the air getting thinner over time, my groins caved in. At that point, we should be expecting about 20 to 25% less oxygen per breath. So adding the cold to the equation, you kind of have the perfect recipe for cramps. I'm sure everyone's feeling it, um, even the stronger participants. It all boils down to, I think, experience, years and years of training, a strong base. And I guess I'm 18, 18 months into cycling. So I've trained hard, yes, but I was still too green, not, not strong enough, not conditioned enough, especially at the final stretches. So there are a few things that I think might have helped and let's talk about it right now. So if you have the dough, uh, now is the time to truly maximize the potential of what the bike can do for you. Um, the 500 grams might not do much on a flat route with uh, a few climbs here and there, but it's going to matter in this one. So if you want to spin more, especially at the last 10 kilometers, uh, you'll want to have a few large cassettes in the back. So perhaps a new derailleur and a new cassette. Um, and the funny story is on my way up, uh, I could hear a beep sound from coming from other cyclists. That's the sound that the DI2 makes when you're out of gear. And I did it as well. So I guess we were all hoping that these overpriced electronic group sets would magically spawn another cock to save our lives. So um, personally, I didn't want to spend any more money on bikes. Uh, I used to ride a Yamaha R1 and the prices I'm looking at for bicycle related stuff are just not making any sense at all. So instead, um, I shed a few kilos. I was eating clean and cutting weight healthily for over a month lost about 2kg, um, bringing my weight down to 77 kilos by the time I was there. Okay, personally I would like to have another go, probably next year, either in the summer or autumn, so that should eliminate the cold factor and hopefully I will be much stronger by then. The next time round though, I might want to go a week earlier just to acclimatize myself, so there are places like um, Ching Ching or Adishan, which could be a good base for me to ride up and down in the altitudes for a few days before heading into the event. So acclimatize, reduce chances of riding in the cold and get stronger. Um, this is how I would approach it in the next time around. So if you are planning to participate, I hope that this video has been helpful and I might be right or wrong about certain things, but um, just let me know. And also, if you're wondering how I got these cool photos taken, um, these were taken by photographers stationed at um, various spots at the event. You have to pay for it, and I paid for a couple of them. Uh, I bought a f also I also bought a few for Wei Chong as a gift. So he's been really friendly and accommodating, and this was the least I could do. So anyway, links in the description again. Uh, if you find it helpful, share with your friends, and if you have any questions or advice, uh, leave a comment. Till then, see you all.